Okay, now we're coming to you know that uh, the transits. Uh, I think I can explain the four-year cycle of, of 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 the price of Bitcoin from Jupiter cycle. Oh, okay. okay. What would you like me to pull up like the transits? The energy? I think this is pretty good. Oh. I don't. I don't. I cannot. I so that this. That. So the I, I can explain to you you know the the, the Jupiter from 2011 to 2021. So you can change from 2011, I guess, March, 2011. Looks like it was about to, but. Yeah, I can explain you this roughly, you know. Here we go, yeah. By June, it had entered Taurus. Okay. So the Taurus, uh, the, 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 I think the Jupiter transit explained things quite nicely here. First of all, Jupiter is, uh, is about 16 degrees away from sun. Okay, so it is not combust. It is weak from the from the longitude point of view because it's just about to leave this sign mm -hmm. and go into the next sign. And this Jupiter is is fallen also. But any planet that gets close to sun gets combust. But if it is not close to sun, it is a little further away, like this is 16 yeah. degrees away, yeah. then the planet is illuminated with the rays of sun and that planet does very good becomes very good very strong you know so, so right combustion so is the very weak combust. okay yeah i see what you mean yeah uh, combustion is a, makes the planet weak but mm -hmm. if the planet is not combust is little away from sun then it gets the all the energy of the sun yeah that would be really bad if jupiter was combust in this chart of course the, yeah of course then jupiter would have a fallen and combust and in sixth house yeah. Would have been bad, you know. That would be too much. But the Jupiter is 16 degrees away, so this is this is a really good thing. Yeah. Okay, now I'm coming to the transits. Uh, okay, the Jupiter uh, transit of Jupiter in this the in the in the in the so this is huh, it, Taurus and Gemini. The, the uh, price of the Bitcoin rose substantially when the Jupiter went from these two signs in these two signs. Okay, and so, so if that, you that was at... 2012 and 13. Ah, okay, and so and what would that be like from the Chandra Lagna? That would be going um, uh, second and third house. Right. So when Jupiter entered in the second house of the Bitcoin chart, it started to really pick up. That makes yes. sense. Third, third is the second from the second. Third is second from the second. Third yeah, is very so, important for, for for the initiator and for 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 financial point of view. Third yeah. is equally important as the second. And like the third is like you know getting it out there, like marketing, like the you know trading it, moving it around, networking uh, it. You're right, exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. So both second, the Jupiter was transiting the Taurus and Gemini signs uh, during the years 2012 and 2013. Gotcha. And then it entered into ca cancer. Okay, it worked good until the 10 degrees of cancer. Okay, okay. and then started the, the Bitcoin started crashing because Jupiter now is in the 12th house. Okay, and aspected by uh, the, the sun. Uh, the, gotcha. I don't know about the other planets, but I think this is what this is what I think. The Jupiter did good until it was in the cancer sign 10 degrees because the ascendant ascendant is nine degrees. Right. And about nine or 10 degrees, the next house started. So the, the, the yeah. 12th house really started when, when the Jupiter came to cancer sign at 10th at tenth or ninth or 10th degrees. So when it hit that 12th cusp, like, or, you know, like exactly. Earth, you know, was talking about how using the certain ch uh, cusps it will like the, the um, he's really big on the, uh, Camping, yes, Camp a certain type of house cusp that I want to try and see if if that makes makes it um, show up. The twelfth cusp would be at twenty eight degrees of Gemini, actually. So that's interesting. So from from another angle, this could mean that when a thing gets to around the end of Gemini or the very beginning of Cancer, it could be like getting activated by that twelfth cusp factor. That might mean like. Um, well, actually, I think that actually is what happened. It was Mars just before it entered Cancer. It did start to dip, actually. Um, I don't know for sure. I'd have to look at that. But yeah, we have to anyways, okay, we're getting off topic. But keep going with um, 
<laughs> yeah. So that explains the, the 2012 and the 2013. Um, yeah. So the, then, the, 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 in the Cancer sign it started falling, and again when Jupiter transited into to to Leo, then also it was bad, but then started recovering in the in the Virgo and Libra. Those two years again was very good, but then when it came into Scorpio, it is also they did the same thing it did in, in the Cancer. Okay, mm -hmm. and so this way you can see now the the the. the uh, I had to remember the dates. So the Jupiter was not good in Leo. And uh, so there's a four year cycle, you know. Mm. So whenever it goes into this, these two signs and these two signs and these two signs, the market, the stock, uh, the, 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 the Bitcoin does good. But when it comes, it goes beyond 10 degrees of cancer or 10 degrees of Scorpio, it does it does not do good, That's and it. now yeah. it's going to come to Pisces next year, and after it cross the ten degrees of Pisces, I think we will see a big correction in the Bitcoin. So that is the next year. Interesting. So what do you think? So this is the lot what a lot of people are asking about. Um, what do you think is going to happen when Jupiter enters Pisces over the next three months? Just for a few, it's going to go like one or two degrees in. And then we'll retrograde back out. So by the end of July, we'll retrograde back into Aquarius, but it will go into the eighth house of Bitcoin, which is a bad house, but it's going to be very strong and in its own sign. So what do you think about that? I think because, you know, it, if it just enters Pisces and come back, because it will still be less than 10 degrees of the, of the, yeah. of the Pisces. Yeah. It won't so be because really it's going to be less than 10 degrees, it's, it won't be that bad. It may be good rather. So as long as it stays in the, it comes back and then, but the moment it goes back into Pisces and crosses that nine degrees or 10 degrees point next year, that will be a difficult time or, or the time of big corrections. That's interesting. That's interesting. Um, that, that, that's a good point. I'm glad you mentioned that. The, when Jupiter enters into Pisces, it, it will be able to sextile with that exalted Mars. Mm -hmm. And that Mars will be like, that'll be what they call like the secretly friendly aspect, you know, in, in a, like in the solar return and Varsha fall and everything. And so that's uh, considered very good. Like if you were doing a Prajna, I know that that would be considered very good that they're, you know, in this Leo chart, Mars being the important planet, like you were saying, for it to be secretly friendly in transit to that Jupiter with mm -hmm. respect to the natal Bitcoin chart could be a very good few months coming up because a lot of the people in the technical market world expect uh bitcoin to like go up to a hundred thousand at some point around <laughs> the summer you know and it's at fifty five thousand. and these are the same people who are right like they're right around three-fifths of the time just using their yeah, know. market stuff you know the same yeah. guys that said it would go to twenty thousand when it was only at ten thousand. so exactly um you got to wonder how but then there's a lot of hype right now and we're kind of more into the bull market and as you know when you're more further into the bull market there's more and more risk you know mm -hmm. and it's it's harder yeah. and harder to predict that top before things go down so See, the mars these days is in is, is in uh, it's fallen in transit you know it's in cancer so mars is very important planet for this chart and the in transit on mars is fallen for two months now it just entered for another month and a half it's going to stay there yeah. So you have to combining both the transit of Jupiter and of Mars. I think, you know, it's, uh, 2021 is not going to be that strong or as big as the people are saying. Ah, interesting. Okay. Interesting. And 22 is going to be really bad. Oh, okay. Do you see? Okay. Especially after it, it goes into, it goes beyond 10 degrees. I'm looking to see if there's any animals out here in my yard confirming, <laughs> denying that. Um that's the thing is that a lot of people um i'm not i'm not giving my own full prediction on this you guys got to take my crypto class if you want to get my full uh, opinion on on predicting it um because it, it is hard to say with this right now but a lot of people think that it's just going to be really really good like the western astrologers just like, oh jupiter and pisces is just gonna be really really good but then yeah. you get more complicated things it looks like Yes, there could be really good things, but it could be very, I think, very dramatic. 
you know, because yeah. the eighth house is like the house of volatility, you know? And exactly. so the markets have been really steady, actually, uh -huh. surprisingly so. And I think that we're going to, when Jupiter leaves that fixed sign with fixed things being fixed and moves into Pisces in the eighth house, we will see a lot more volatility and really high highs, but also going back down low and a lot of people just going crazy and, and all that over this. But overall, I do think that it is, um, it is more bullish in, in general. I think that Jupiter is going to enter into its own sign just because Jupiter is the wealth foundation kind of, you know, he's so important for wealth. But, uh, but at the same time, uh, this is not, I'm not saying that for the whole rest of the year. I think it's going to be very interesting how, how things yeah. go. Anyways, sorry. So, so that, I think I'm probably a little off or maybe it's I'm, I'm, my, my forecast is not coming in line with what you have been doing or what others, other has been doing, you know? Well, I like that though. I like to see different opinions. But yeah. Um, yeah, tell me more just about your forecast. Just be straight up. How do you really think it's going to be? Because then you never know. A year from now, everybody will be like, whoa, Raj nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you see, I'm going to I, I, gonna, I gonna bring this out from another perspective also. Okay, and that is the Dasha system is very important in, 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 in Vedic astrology. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in Western astrology, they do not even con conceive this idea of peri periods, you know. Right. Uh, mostly we use Vinshotri period, this is 120 year cycle. Mm -hmm. in, in, in stocks and in this chart, I, I have, it's my through, I think I spent 20 years just find, trying to find out which Dasha would, would be. I had just a second, you know. No worries, no worries. There are a lot of. He's a busy guy, you know, there's people. No, just... it's just, you know, a lot of plant calls, you know. <laughs> okay, now. Okay, so I have studied about a, a number of years to find out which dasha would work better. And I think, you know, there is this, and Prashad has recommended, I think at least maybe 30 or 40 cycles in dasha, you know. So I tried almost all. You can see, understand how much work I put in just to find out whether a dasha system would work with the stock and stock market or not. Yeah. And my experience is that, or this is my conclusion now, I have, I'm writing that in, in a book also, it will come out pretty soon, you know, and that there is Dasha called, a 60 year cycle called Shashti Haini Dasha. Mm. Shashti means 60 and Shashti Haini Sama Dasha is the name given by Prashara. And it says, he says that this Dasha should be used when there is a strong sun in the first house. Mm. And in, incidentally, in all of the stocks, the sun comes in the first or in the second or in the 12th house because the IPO is in the early morning. So the sun comes in the first house. And I noticed that this 60 year cycle gives very good results for the stocks to me. Wow, okay. And I tested that on this chart also. On this chart, sun is in this chart, the sun is the sixth house. So by, you know, that simple rule, you cannot use that Shashti Haini Dasha here. But sun is very prominent in this chart. If you look at the moon chart. The sun is in the tenth house. Is, 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 has and it's like it's, it's also the fact that K two is in the first in Leo makes it seem like okay. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I see your logic. So, I see your so, so it is. It is. It's an ascendant lord. And so sun is very prominent in this chart. So I tested this dasha system for the Bitcoin. This chart also. Yeah. And what did you get? And this Bitcoin chart. You know, the the Jupiter period started. Jupiter started in 2011. Interesting. And it's a 10 year cycle. It's not 16 like uh -huh. Vinshotri, it's a 10 year cycle. Gotcha. So that Shasti Haini 10 year cycle started from 2011 and it's gonna end in 2021. What time? It has been in fact ended 2000, March 2021. Jupiter gives us exceptional results in this chart because this Jupiter has a lot of advantages. It is involved in Adi Yoga, it is involved, it, it is very close to sun, not very close to, but it's illuminated by sun and uh, it's a natural benefit. And, it, and so Jupiter, moon chart also is Rajo Karak. So Jupiter gave the exceptional results and that's why the transit of Jupiter was very important. So then this what is the basic rule of astrology. So what Dasha is it in now? Exactly, the, the <laughs> basic rule of astrology is that you should look at the transit of the planet of 
Mahadasha, uh, Mahadasha planet. Yes. Okay. So Jupiter was very prominent. Jupiter transit were very prominent between 2010 and uh, 2011 and 2021. Now the next Dasha is of Sun. Is of Sun? Okay. Okay. For 10 more years. So you have to see the, look at the period of, uh, you can show this Dasha here also. Say in Vinsho Tri Dasha, you can go to Shashti Haini Dasha. It's right there. Uh, uh, should I retire? No, it's not there. Because you must have had that, uh, that rule that only hmm. Rashi Dashas and the Dasha first selected. So you have to first take this. Hmm. I don't know. First you have to take this, use Rashi Dasha and select to condition. Or you can try this. You have to get Shasti Haini here. Yeah, I don't see it, but um I, I can tell you how to get it. You go to options. Okay, options. And calculation options. Dasha. And there must be signs, dashas. Um Not, no, uh, general, general. Here there is a how to get this. Hmm. Well, there, is a, there, is a, there, is a, there is a question here where, where you can see. You do, do, no. Let me get it in my. We'll do it on. Yeah, do we'll figure that on our own time for the audience. But but yeah, for what um, <clears throat> what what he's talking about uh, is is for for the viewers who might not know is that when your dasha starts, you want to look at the transit of the Maha Dasha Lord and see where exactly, it's at, and it will have a big say on yeah. um, what's gonna on you know that house that it's in and things will have a lot to do with the stuff that's going on for it so that does make sense i follow what you're saying here i've just not heard of that dasha so that's cool you basically have a new dasha technique that you're working with that nobody else is doing exactly that's Very that's cool. my my com contribution and so, financial it, <laughs> so if it's uh if it's sun dasha then you would almost think like month to month that what's going yes. on with the sun might so determine it. it could be really volatile yeah okay Interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, yeah. So, okay. The yeah. Sun like, is in the sixth house. Sun is in the Capricorn sign, the sign of its enemy. So this this period, I don't think it's gonna go to. It's gonna. It can go up slowly, little bit, but yeah. more or less, it's gonna be. You know, you cannot see that kind of rise. It's very possible that the government comes up. See, the thing is that could be happening right now is that there could be a. Ever since last year, a lot of big banks and institutions started buying into it and flooding money into it. Now, when there's more and more of their trillions of dollars in it, they could try, they could pump and dump it. They could say, now we're initiating our world government, new world order coin that all you guys have to buy. And, and we're and now we're selling all the Bitcoin and dumping it and transiting into that. And everyone has to get that and they ruin the whole world with it. But hopefully, hopefully that won't um, happen, you know, yeah. but that, that's uh that is a a thing that people are concerned about with the di increase of digital currencies and all that. Um, all right, but let's I, switch gears here. I, Sorry, what? I would say that, you know, one should not go with the flow, you know, that everybody is so enthusiastic about this. It is time to be a little conservative and uh, yeah. well, the thing not, put, that, not put a lot of money into it, maybe a little bit. You yeah, know? in general with markets, I mean, I wouldn't agree with you that to not put anything into it because this is the future and you're an older guy. You don't know that as much. I'm a younger guy. I know how the younger stuff's going and uh, I understand you know, that you can't teach an old dog a new trick. So there's certain parts of it that, you know, a lot of your generation is like, we just don't get it. And y'all have missed out, you know, a lot of the gains. But at the same yeah. time, you're right. At the same time, you're right. Because when there's this much hype, generally, you want to buy, as they say, you want to buy when there's blood on the streets, when there's fear and when it's low. You want to sell when there's euphoria, when everyone's super hyped and excited and mm -hmm. talking all about it. See, that's the thing is like now my mom and my brother's friend and their girlfriend wants to buy Bitcoin. That's a major sign that, yeah, maybe I want to sell. Because yeah. by the time the average, j average dude on the street thinks it's a good idea to buy like Dogecoin, you've already missed it. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Um, exactly. You see the Mars is so strong, Sun is Jupiter, company. there are so many yogas, so many Raj yogas here. So I'm not saying that it's going to completely disappear. But it's going right. to come back. It's going to fight. Yeah, fight. I hear what you're saying. 
Now, but you know the kind of the kind of growth you have seen between 2011 and 2021 is not going to be there. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So, like, tell me. All right. This was the other thing that I, I with the monthly returns. Tell me more yes. about how you read the the monthly kind of solar return because that's something I haven't really done a lot with. I started once I saw you doing it. I started experimenting, looking at Bitcoin's monthly chart, and it looked it made a lot of sense. Yeah. In monthly charts, my study tells that there are five things you should look at. All right. In 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 a monthly solar return chart. Okay. The most important is the Mars, because okay. Mars is very important planet in the natal chart. It's very important planet for the stock market, and it's, therefore it's going to be very important planet in this in this uh, monthly solar return charts also. If Mars is strong, it's good for the Bitcoin. Mm. And you know how the planet can be strong in transit, you know, mm -hmm. in good signs, in good houses, not combust. Yeah. not fallen so if it's a mars is weak then it's going to be bad so that is one consideration okay out of five considerations the second thing you should look at is the moon okay as you said in the beginning you know moon has the impact on currencies okay? and the markets you know yeah and, the... and, and 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 emotions also the markets you know psyche yeah. also how moon people feel. Feel. do i want to buy do i want to sell exactly yeah. So the moon is the second thing. It is moon. Moon is strong. It is exalted. It is aspected by Jupiter in the monthly solar return chart. Okay, that month could be good. Gotcha. But if month is fallen, if the moon is fallen, mm -hmm. it's in sign of Saturn, or aspected by Saturn, or conjunct Rahu or Ketu, that moon is bad for that month. Gotcha. Okay. The third so, is the month lord. So like Many if we're solar return chart. Yeah, the month lord or year lord is very important. All right, so if I click the masa, the month lord, and then um, like like this was February, yes. um, and February everything went up a lot, and you have all this stuff in Aquarius, and um, you know maybe that had to do with it. I don't know. Um, you tell mm -hmm. me. I mean, you're the one. Mars was all right. Well, Mars was in Taurus here, and in the sixth. But that is a good house for, like we said, like destroying the competition. For Mars, sixth house is good house. Yeah. Cruel planets in the sixth is like what you want because you need that tough, cruel energy to beat your competition, to beat your problems, you know, and you don't want like, or like Ernst, well, my teacher Ernst is always saying how you don't want like Venus in the sixth, really. It's too, like she's just, it makes people just want everyone to do everything for them or they want to hire someone to, to, to mow the lawn. You know, they don't even want to get up and mow the lawn, you know, and, and so you need like, a Saturn or a Mars in the sixth that makes you want to fight, you know, or, or, or like put in the hard work. They're like hard work, you know, sixth house is a house of hard work. Yeah. Especially the Mars does good job in sixth house. Yeah. Because you just don't eat like the general idea, cruel planets do well in the Upachayas. Yeah, general idea. Exactly. It's that, you know, it's that idea. Whereas, and then the benefic plants, planets just don't, yeah, they, they, they don't want to work as hard. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, and sorry. You see in this chart, in this chart, Maspati or Month Lord is Saturn, and Saturn was strong here in this, in the third house, in its own sign, you know. Oh. So, as I said, you have to look at the five things and then right. make a final decision. Okay, what are the five things again? So, the first is the Mars, the second is the Moon, the third is the Mars Lord, a uh, Month Lord, Month Lord, or Maspati. So, that Saturn is quite strong in this chart, it's its own house surrounded by. Venus and Jupiter. And look, it's it is with the second cusp, like we were talking about. If you use yeah. those Campanus hut, that also probably adds to it somehow. But okay, sure. yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And you guys, he's talking about seeing the Varsha fall. You normally have a year lord or a Varsha Pati, then the mm -hmm. month lord is the Masa Pati. So Saturn was the lord of this month for, for Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's you see the, in this chart, moon is also aspected by Jupiter. Ah, oh, okay, yeah. So my moon is good, Mars is good, Jupiter, uh, the Maspati is good, Saturn, the three things, good things, you know. And so even the other moon is in the eleventh, you know, like all planets are just gonna make you gain, you know, the eleventh house is just like the cape, the cash in the paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> you you use very nice words, you know. I like that because I'm stuck <laughs> with my old 
old terminology and you bring the new new terminology well, yeah, that's what i really try to do with the youtube and, and in my readings with stuff you really it's tough to take this stuff and play, make it into plain english you know or yes like, yes yeah. you um, make everything relevant to this uh, the present day thank you <laughs> so keep going all right so so yeah um that month was strong. Is there another month that you um, that we should look at? What was it? All right. No, so no. This is the fourth thing now. There are five things we have oh, to consider. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. The number four thing is the Jupiter's transit sign, because we have we are going through the Jupiter major period still. Yes. So the, 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 you can see the sign or the strength of the major period planet. Yes. Okay. From Mahadasha Lord, this is Jupiter. So in that house, Jupiter also. Okay, let me go. Pretty back good. Back. Yeah, this was yes. February. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Of course, it is. It is combust now. It's not very good, so it's weak at this, this stage, you know. Mm -hmm. But it is the one of the five considerations. Yeah. And the first fifth consideration is the yogas. That means the, you know, like Moon is aspected by Jupiter, Saturn is, is you know between two good planets, Venus. And Jupiter, all all kind of yogas, okay. Yeah, a lot. Raj yogas, other things, combinations. How the planet? If if there is a if there is a combination of good planets, if the good planets help each other in in the simple language, like Jupiter, Venus, Moon, and Mercury, if they help each other, they coordinate. It's a good thing. Yeah. And if the malefic planets coordinate with each other, like Mars and Saturn aspect each other. Mars aspects Saturn or Saturn aspects Mars mm -hmm. or Rahu, they combine with Rahu and Ketu. So if the bad planets coordinate, that's a bad thing. Yeah. So the first, the fifth thing is the coordination is the better word than the yoga. You know? Okay, so that's that's cool. Those are good, cool five things. But I have to ask you, you didn't like factor in the month of Lord. Like I was thinking you would put maybe look at that, you know, um, or is that not as important for the monthly solar return? Uh, uh, but my research indicates that Muntha is not that important. Okay, well, I don't know. I've not really looked at these monthly returns, but I know that with the yearly, the Muntha does seem to really show up significantly. Yes. Like yes. if you look, and you guys, for, for what I'm talking about here, uh, for those, the Varshafala, there is the, like here, this just looking at now the year, the year of Varshafala for Bitcoin starting this January, you have your Varshapati sun. You have Muntha, that uh, means like the the sign. Every year you get a new sign that it goes through. And that's a big, whatever house that's in and all will be important. So if yeah. it is in Leo, that might also mean something important since that's its natural first house um, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. something. But anyways, that was just to explain to people what that means. But switching back to the monthly thing. Okay, okay that's cool. So, yeah, so you have five basic things. You look at Mars, Moon. The Jupiter, and then the Jupiter sign, transit sign, and then the month Lord, month Lord, and then Moon. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. And the coordination. If that makes good sense. Good planets coordinate, or bad planets coordinate. You know, combination. Like, you can say. And I'm noticing in this chart that okay, well, of all those factors, a lot of them were mainly good, and then the Jupiter wasn't quite as good. But then mm -hmm. I noticed that Moon is trining it, though. You know, it's like mm -hmm. Moon is trining it openly, friendly. That's yeah. I always know that's a good thing. You know what I mean? Um, Certainly, yeah. Okay, cool. And then it was in March. It it dipped more in March when people thought it was going to keep going up, and then um, from then it was kind of half. For for April, it was like really good this first week of April, and then it started to dip back down. Yeah, because um, Mars Rahu are close now. Wait, what's that? Mars has come very close to Rahu now. Ah, okay, right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Jupiter is good. Mm -hmm. so the month lord is sun. So this is a sort of, you know, situation. Sometimes, you know, the two things say that it's, it can be a good thing or three things, three factors are negative, and then it's a sort of in between, you know. It's a mixed thing, yeah. Ah, it's a mixed month, yeah. I, I so it, if you clearly get situation, then you should act on that. Otherwise you can use technical analysis, you know. <laughs> yeah. You should always use technical analysis with this kind of thing, you know. That's what I'm trying to do with, um, and 
yeah, for, uh, I better promote. I got to stop and do some promotion. So you, any of you guys watching this, you know, you got to join my financial astrology and cryptocurrency Zoom group. And that's what we, you know, we study all this stuff. We do mainly focus on cryptocurrencies because that's the new thing right now. But as yeah. we keep going, you know, we might switch into other markets or other areas based on what the astrology and the omens show, you know, but, um, but it is a new, it is very much a new field where you can, I mean, you just can't gain anything like the best investments on the planet in the last year have been cryptocurrency investments. You know, we can't deny that how much Ethereum and Dogecoin, Dogecoin, right? Like that's crazy. I don't know if you heard or were following all that, but Anyways, y'all join the group for, for more of the actual technical analysis details if you're serious about investing, because we do do that. We look at, first we look at what they're saying, the technical chart experts are saying, and then we just look at the astrology and see if it agrees or if it disagrees, you know? And then if it agrees, we just know to follow that a little bit more. But, um, yeah, and I would love to get you in that group maybe one day. And if I can, if I can get you in there, that would be awesome. But, but yeah, uh, Man, so do you have any other any other like tips or techniques you want to share with us? I'd love to have you on more. I feel like there's probably a lot more I could share, but probably for this video, that's probably we probably covered a lot. Yeah, but yeah, um, we can set up another time for another maybe gold. Yeah. So, uh, are there like now you've done the IPOs of stocks of different stocks and all? Yes. Um that's that's the main thing that you go with because that's what a lot of astrologers seem to go with right yeah what that's my, other, that is my main interest if i was to ask you right now like to you know tell me about this certain coin or something what other techniques might you use would you use prajna or what i don't know i'm just curious what other um things might you use to to read mainly just the ipo of the chart for the stocks, yes, I use IPDO, IPO day chart. And then I have a system of analyzing those charts, mm -hmm. which includes this new dasha that I've talked about, Shine Dasha. That's really and cool. And the strength of the planets and the, the yogas the present in that. And so that's, 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 that's my main interest. But I also do monthly analysis of gold. Mm. So the, 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 the last uh, IP, or oh, day chart that I put on the my website was the chart of the Coinbase. Ah, okay. Coinbase, I think it's an excellent chart. Oh. It's a long-term stock. One should buy it whenever it gets down and never sell it. Ah, okay, very cool. So <laughs> actually, um, my mother bought some of that stock, but right away and lost a little bit on it. But I told her I was like, "Yeah, well, you should probably hang on to that one because yeah, because in general, the, she yeah, was too early. You know, you should have waited at least one more week, one week yeah. to buy. You know, then you should have gotten the good price." Yeah, Coinbase is a. I mean, it's a huge one, and it's it's just a whole new industry building, right? You know, and exactly it makes sense to get in on that early. Yeah. Any other tips? You want to give out you got it you guys you got to pay him you got to. you know i know how it is you got to actually put pay first you get what you pay for but he's given out a lot of freebies already so <laughs> yeah well look you can you can uh, visit my website stockastrologer.com to get a lot of free information <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. He has a really cool like monthly forecast, yearly forecast uh, thing for a few different things, gold, uh, Bitcoin and stocks. And yeah, that's great. So yeah, I forgot I should have shared your promotion. Yeah, stockastrologer.com. Check out his website. Is there anywhere else we can find you or anything else? He's got a book out. You guys should check out his book um, where I guess that's where you cover this technique. I just found this guy two weeks ago, so it's all new. I still am getting him, you know, to come to study all your stuff as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm an old time of an astrologer or guy, not very much into YouTube and <laughs> and Instagrams. <laughs> no, I mean, and, and you know, my viewers can say like I've made videos a number of times already saying you guys watch out for YouTube astrology because just because some young kid who's like 25 comes on here yeah. and really good at marketing and makes the really flashy titles exactly. and thumbnails that doesn't mean that they're the best astrologer you know no. the people that get the most views are not necessarily the most you know like sad guru or whatever like it's not you know like this is not like the the, the true sad guru you know if you just type in sad guru on youtube you're not it's yeah you know so i'm just saying that 
uh, but I, he may be doing great work and all. I'm not saying anything against Yeah, him. of course, of course. I'm just saying that you have to watch out, you know, pop culture. Mm. Yeah, this pop culture is pop culture. And YouTube is like, you know, it gets that name from the boob tube mm. we used to call TV. You know, we used to call watching TV, like watching the boob tube, you know, or whatever. And so yes. they, whatever they, I have put on the website has, I have done a lot of research and there's a lot of, you know, effort behind it. Exactly. It's not just, I said, let's study one book. I studied one idea and I'm just talking about it. And that's I'm what done. YouTubers are. They do, there's no credibility. They just read one thing and go on there and, and yeah, and everyone follows them. So yeah, there was some really great work on there. And I mean, this is a guy that's done a hundred published chemistry research papers, you guys. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad to have you on, you know, like on my channel. And I love the scientific research based astrologers, you know? Yes, exactly. You know, because astrology is profound enough where we don't need to be like believing or making up extra stuff that isn't there. We need to really just show what's really there. And First it, back test test. Yes. Testing is very important, you know, because there's so many techniques in astrology. There is a Gemini, there is a Prashna, uh, and so many, you know, Ashtakvarga, and, uh, you know, there, yeah. there's, there's no end to it. And, but you have to see which one is applied, which one is applicable, and which one is not, you know, at what, what juncture, what position, you know. And, it, you know, different techniques will speak to different people, and, and you won't, we, none of us will have time to study them all, you know, yeah. so keep, it's better to specialize in just a few and get really good at them, I think, exactly. than to go try and go and watch every YouTube video and get like, and get just confused by all the different things you hear. You know, that's what a lot of people that come to me for readings have just been watching all these YouTube videos and like, and I know what, what this guy says this and this guy says that, and they're just, the stuff they're sharing, I'm like, man, you'd have been better off just not watching any of it, but yeah. um, okay, but great. So I'm happy to have you on my channel, you guys, and you can check out his website. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming on board, Raj. Okay, thank you very much. It was nice talking to you. All right, good. Okay, thank you.